I'm your host, Doc Rodden, and this is Gruesome Magazine, where we review the very latest in streaming and video on-demand horror movies. Each week, my co-host Jeff Moore, Crystal Cleveland, Dave Dreyer, and I will take a look at various spooky, scary, and gory genre offerings. With me this week is my co-host, Jeff Moore. Jeff, how you doing, bud? Greetings from the tundra of Middle America. I'm doing good. Yes, greetings, Middle America. Yes, Iowa rocks. It does. <laughs> well, you know, it maybe was a good pebbles. Try. I don't know. <laughs> pebbles? It pebbles? Yeah, it pebbles. It pebbles. <laughs> pebbles. That, that's, that's new. I like that. I All love right. Iowa, but I don't want anyone else to know it. So. Okay. Well, <laughs> mum's the word. We won't tell it. Stay away. All right. Also joining us this week is Crystal Cleveland, the living dead girl. Crystal, how you doing? Uh, wonderful. I don't have a witty retort because I've realized I have to stop that. I can't compete with Jeff. No witty retorts. No, no. Mm. I, I, I'm not good at it. You can. I, I can't. Just We're say done. something that makes no sense <laughs> to anybody but you, Crystal. <laughs> Oh man! Or you could just do a rendition of uh, I think we're I'm here just getting shot right in the tits. Uh, oh, <laughs> there, oh we go. there we go. Uh, we got a winner. We got and a winner. It does make sense. It does make sense. It, it does. does. Mm-hmm. Uh, gosh! <laughs> All right, rounding out the crew. Let's welcome back Dave Dreyer. Dave, how you doing, bud? Greetings from the taint of Northeastern <laughs> Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um, Dave, welcome yeah. back. We have missed you. You have uh, been absent the past couple of episodes. Yeah, things have been a little crazy for a while, but I'm back for a bit now. Thank God I managed I managed to get myself furloughed, so thank God I've got some time off. Ah. Uh, Is that good? That's a very good thing, yes. I means okay, I get paid okay. and I, I get paid and I get to stay home. Oh, okay. So, wow. Yeah, good, good, good. Okay. Yeah. I was I wasn't um, sure. I was like, oh God, okay. Geez, when I got furloughed, I didn't get paid. How's yeah, that that's what I was concerned about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's a, it, we won't get into it. It's a, it's a hybrid. Uh, oh, okay, okay. Uh, okay, good. But yeah, furlough's the best way of putting it. But Oh, Dave, oh, Dave. Well, welcome back, <laughs> and uh, you picked the week where we have two films that have subtitles, so uh, there's that. We're torturing yeah. you on your way back in, because we know how much you love reading subtitles. Yes, I was like, why was I excited to do this? I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm having a hard time remembering. <laughs> We did lots of English speaking films while you were here. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> sure yeah. Just mm-hmm. kept pushing these ones back, figuring I couldn't have <laughs> them all. Right, right, right. That's absolutely right. All right. What we do here every week is we review two films that are streaming video on demand at film festivals or something similar out there and about films we think you should know about. And we have two this week. And as I teased, yes, both of them are foreign films for us here in the States. The first one is a Chinese film called Monstrum. And it is Chinese, right? It is, right? Korean. Korean. It's Korean. Oh, it's Korean as well? Really? Are you sure? Oh, yeah. Okay, that sounds good. King Jong. Okay. Yes, it is because Mm -hmm. the the cast is from Parasite and uh, uh, Train to Busan. So, yeah. Thank you. (laughs) It premieres May 14th on Shudder. And well, I can't wait to really talk about this. All right. And the other one is, and this is interesting. It's Panama's first ever horror film. It's called the Diablo Rojo PTY. And it is coming to audiences also on May 14th out on VOD. When we decided we were going to do this, uh, we were wondering what PTY was because, it, you know, I know what PYT is, but I don't know what PTY, but you found out, Jeff, that it is the airport code. Yes, for Panama City. All right, so that must be what it is. There's no I idea. have no idea. I... Okay. Well, I kind of like that idea, so we'll go with that. It sounds like a new chicken wing flavor at Buffalo Wild Wings. The yeah. Diablo Warhol PTY. Could, yeah. be Could be that too. Oh, gosh. All right, <laughs> let's dive into this. First up is Monstrum from director Zhang Ho Hu. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce these. The cast includes Myung Min Kim. In Quan Kim and Hieri Li. That's worth the price of admission right there. It is. Yeah. It, yeah, it's it is. It. All right. So it doesn't stop yet. Uh, the synopsis <laughs> goes, Yun Giyom. Oh, oh, boy. That, that, that was so wrong. <laughs> it is a loyal subject of King Jung Jung of Joseon. <laughs> Why am I doing this? He struggles to fight against a monster that threatens King Jung Jung's <laughs> life. 
<laughs> and a group of people trying to display <laughs> King Jung Jong. Oh, stop it. <laughs> Our apologies to, to, to the entire country. Of Korean South nation. Korea. Uh, King uh, Jong just launched the missiles. They're on their way. Uh, well, that's, yeah, he's, yeah. <laughs> Too bad we don't have. <laughs> oh God! Oh, oh, dose of curry oh. would like is like just oh, like throwing dirt in my face. All right, so this, like I said, premieres May Fourteenth on Shutter. So let's dive into this, Dave, sir. Welcome back. What is your first impression of Monstrum? Well, I, I put this thing on, and of course, right away, realizing it's another freaking subtitle movie, I'm like, oh Jesus Christ! Uh, I knew nothing about this. I've been totally out of the loop for what six eight weeks at this point so i didn't know what any of these were so i i went into it totally blind That's and I, I was kind of pleasantly surprised how much i enjoyed this uh, one problem i had and this is no fault of the films this would be the fault of maybe the pr firm but if you're gonna send out a movie with subtitles don't put the fucking watermark where the subtitles lay. Yeah, yeah, that was that was just kind of dumb. But beyond that, uh, surprisingly, uh, kind of like what happened with Train with Bus- uh, Train to Busan, uh, you kind of get wrapped up in these in in this tale. You know, there, there's a lot going on here. A lot going on. There's you know warrior fighting. I mean, it takes place in what like what what year is it supposed to be like? I don't know what it is. It was a while back, obviously. And I, and again, there's a little bit spoilery already, but they had me, I, I was a little on the fence, but when we find out the big bad beastie is sparkles. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> I, I'm like, Oh, that's it. I'm I, okay. Yeah. I'm in. <laughs> yeah. Totally, totally had me. It's, oh, it's sparkles, sparkles. sparkles, the deranged plague infested <laughs> cat who has come to kill them all. <laughs> I, see, I thought it was a poochie. Poochie, like a Pomeranian. I thought it was a cat. I don't know, or whatever. It was called a beastie then. It was it was a little a little furry thing that eats an infested rat, a plague infested rat, and oh. it runs off into the into the tunnel, only to become monstrum. <laughs> <laughs> but I I really enjoyed some of the elaborate set pieces. I mean, there was a lot of detail here. Uh, the beastie was total CGI, but it wasn't really bad cgi at least at least not most of the time and there was some really uh cool shots uh you know like arrow shots and stuff you know where you see the you know from the arrow point of view and stuff and i I don't know there was enough to keep me interested all the way through and again kind of like train to busan you you kind of get wrapped up in these characters and there's the two brothers and one brother's kind of a heavy set oaf who's kind of always cracking jokes and you know i don't know it just worked for me so surprisingly, my first impression is one of enjoyment. Wow! Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I want I want to uh, just touch on the uh, the CGI. It it is far superior to the CGI that you see in you know like sci fi films. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, it doesn't match what we see in high high grade Hollywood films, but. Yeah, I, I don't think it took away from the film, even when it was at its worst. I thought they did a great oh, job. Oh, no, it, right. it, was, it was very, very passable. Yeah. And it was a great design, too. Yes, yes. They never, why, why do you get so big? They never do say why you got so large. Mm. Plague that's, infested that's people. Yeah, just just kind of go <laughs> with the plague. When the, when the plague was happening, we were not ruled by that's a bunch of disease giants. Do. I'm, I'm not <laughs> <that>, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's find out what the rest of the crew think. Jeff Moore, you are up next, sir. What's your first impression of Monstrum? I like this a lot. Oh, yay. You know, I wanted to say, well, when it first started off, I was a, a, probably similar to Dave. It's fairly complicated, and, it, you know, it, it's fast moving enough, and there's enough dialogue that it's hard to read and watch at the same time. But at some point, I kind of figured it out, and from that point on, I was I was all in. I would kind of like to go back. I really like the uh, the cinematography or the setting of where they filmed this, and I don't know how much of that was actually like CGI, but it looked great. It had a really sort of dark, I don't know, like oversaturated color look. Yeah, it takes place. I I can't help myself. I had to look this up. It, it's this Chosen Dynasty was from 1400 to 1900 in Korea. 
Well, that's and a, that, a pretty pretty good time span there. It is. So we we don't know when this was, but it, you know, I mean, they were still believing. They were still believing in like sh- shamans and stuff like that. So I'm thinking oh, yeah. it was. It was you know, I think your first guess of like around 1600s was pretty yeah. accurate. And there was an actually there is a mythical creature that fits this description. And I'm not going to try to say what the actual Korean name for it is, but it, it's sort of, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, it, means, it translates to sparkles. So, uh, yeah. so yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. This, you know, and the other thing I liked a lot about it was the, uh, you know, we, we've, we've got on one hand a creature feature, but on the other hand, we've got this sort of palace intrigue where the prime minister is working to undermine the king and the way he's doing it is by instigating fear and mistrust and double dealings and things, which, geez, sounds kind of familiar. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, I guess things things stay the same. Yeah, lots of CGI, but I didn't have a problem with it. And in fact, when they show the young Sparkles that, that gets freed from its cage, <laughs> I thought that was awesome. I mean, I, I was seeing individual hairs and, and all kinds of stuff. I thought that was excellent. I think maybe some of the design later might have partially been built around. It was easier to do because they didn't have to uh, render all the all the fur and hairs and stuff. It's kind of covered with sores and things like that. Kind of emotional, a little sappy in places, but I, I don't know. I was along for the ride. It's got kind of the general problem of some action slash horror movies where people survive far more damage than they could <laughs> in reality. <laughs> but what the hell? I was cheering anyway. So yeah, I I like this a lot. I like the the characters. You know, they get Dave mentioned the two brothers. One's a, a dishonored general who the king comes back and asks for his help. And the other one's his brother who was also in there. And he's kind of comic really, but he's also very capable once he gets gets down to business uh and and they're uh the general's like adopted daughter that he saved during this double dealing plague era anyway i i enjoyed the whole layout it was it was kind of a grand epic you know there's just like all kinds of stuff going on and and a monster monstrum giant cat dog cow something bear something <laughs> some <laughs> plague infested furry thing yes yeah, yes a plague infested furry thing <laughs> uh, exactly yeah it uh it was a lot of a lot more politics than this than i thought there was going to be that's for sure all right let's find out what crystal thought crystal what's your first impression of <gasps> monstrum so it's got action it's got quite a bit of gore actually it's got these like cute moments and it's got a little bit of romance and 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 i actually cried and that is so i will never admit to that again so i obviously (laughs) liked it i mean it was so it was hmm, it was very sweet and i liked the story there were there were some parts that were there were absolute holes in the story but i didn't care you know Some people got sprayed with blood and immediately got plague infested. And then someone else got sprayed with some poochy saliva or something and we're fine, which doesn't make sense to me, but I didn't care. The costumes were amazing. The set and the locations were amazing. The shots, some of the shots were just absolutely beautiful. I mean, I was like, God, that's some good camera work there. It's got a lot of comedy, which... It starts off right right in the beginning, and you can tell that this is not going to be a completely serious movie, but it has serious moments. And yeah, the CGI monster might not have been too happy about that, but th- that was the only way that they could do it with any sort of budget, because they have a big monster. And yeah, I loved it. I loved it too. They had some nastiness with like pustules and boils and super gross. and. Yeah. Lots, lots of severed limbs. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the characters were really well developed. Uh, yeah. I like I liked a lot of this movie. It was it's it was it was good. I agree. We're all we're on the same page. Yay. Yeah, I, I actually think we are because I have Ooh. a very similar reaction. I I favor these films. I enjoy these films. And this one it, it it's actually superior than most of them. 
it's not Train to Busan or Wailing. It's not that kind of film, but it, it's a little bit more air quotes Hollywood than those films because it has some of the structure and you know tones of it. You know, with the with the with the love interest and the you know the finale for that and the you know the whole sacrifice air quotes toward the end that has to be done that makes everybody upset and cry and it it has those kind of tropes but it it works and i also like the creature it is obviously cgi but it's like like we said it's not offensive it fits the context of the story it's lit well it's rendered into the story well they use it to great effect and He's always biting people in the head, so that's always wonderful. Mm. And there's a lot. There's a number of times, like when he's crawling around the rooftops and he's got the bad guy hanging out of his face. <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, man, take it." Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so you got it like that. And then we've got all this political intrigue, and you got people fighting, and yeah, you know, they're doing the usual wire fooey kind of stuff, and just all kinds of crazy things. There were moments that I started losing interest. From time to time, uh, especially in the first half before we meet the creature, you know, it would it would kind of catch my interest and lose my interest and catch, catch my interest, lose my interest. But once the creature's involved and the, and the story becomes a little bit more concise with the creature being used as a as a tool to uh, usurp the current emperor. Right. It It, it, it starts really taking off. And, you know, people st- <laughs> and people start falling left and right, you know, characters. All right, let's whittle these characters down because there's so many characters, right? There are. But I want to say that the four main characters that we follow, the two brothers, the their their adopted daughter thing, and, and the love interest are really good characters. And you really like them. You like the loyalty between them. You like how the new character, you know, stands by them who, you know, is actually kind of going against his his own people to do mm-hmm. that. And the whole Arrow thing, remember the first time I met you? It was a really good... Oh, it was uh, romantic. Yes, yeah. that was awesome. Yeah, so, you know, <laughs> the, the, you know, the story is well-written. It's got a lot going for it. I'm glad it's on Shudder and not on Sci-Fi, because I think this is a perfect Shudder film. It is it's a lot of fun. Yeah, and it's a couple of years old. It's taken a while to get here, which is... Yeah, it came out the fall of 2018 in South Korea, so I don't know why I thought it was originally from China. Who, who knows? Oh, I wasn't sure either. I, I feel a little bad that I didn't know as well, <laughs> but I, 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 wasn't, I wasn't really thinking about it, honestly. I mean, it kind of gets you into the story right away. Do you see the, what, the two brothers, and they're so ridiculous, and then with the little girl, how they're like, it's almost like, what it, what is it, like the Three Stooges kind of thing, because <laughs> they're kind of, you know splashing each other I, it's i think that i think a lot of these movies have heart and it's sweet you know uh-huh. that's kind of a trope of these films or a trademark of in this case a trademark they always wrap in multiple kind of sub into the stories i mean if you look at the whaling there's so much stuff you know wrapped into that train busan is probably one of the more <laughs> straightforward films i've seen but look at parasite you know a very popular yeah. film Academy Award winning film. The subgenres in that are just all over the place. So, you know, it, it's it's really interesting how they how they do that. And uh, this is a good example of it. But Dave, I have to imagine that you liked all the, the body chewing and legs flying and Yes, the carnage was uh was quite good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was. Um but ultimately, I mean, this really, it's another one of those weird, I mean, even though there's a monster in it, I think at its heart, it really isn't a horror movie. It it's, really is more yeah, of a, it's, a character driven drama than anything else. There just happens to be a, a, a rabid furry thing running around. Yeah. It's more, it's more fantasy more than it is, yeah. horror, but, but it definitely is a, a creature and it definitely does horrific things. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. There, there's no doubt about it. And it, it, you know, it, it, it's able to cross that line over into, you know, appealing to a wide audience. I think I, I, I told my wife after I watched this, I said, I think you could maybe even watch this. I think she'd like the story part of it, uh-huh. you know, because it's a lot like those like Outlander and that kind of stuff. You know, you got all uh-huh. that 
you know, all that intrigue going on and people with alternate agendas and, you know, you don't know what's going on. And uh, it was kind of fun. I thought they did a real good job with that. And I think we all have to agree that we all need one of those sexy pilgrim hats like they were wearing at the end, the, the seafood <laughs> pilgrim hat. Yeah, I think I think that should be our Christmas <laughs> present this year, hat. Doc. Okay. Yeah, sexy, sexy pilgrim hat. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. Uh, I was thinking, I mean, how do they? Yeah. How, wow. how do they wear that and make it look good? Was what I was thinking. I don't know, they did. They managed it, it though. Yes. 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 I was like, damn, I like that hat. I'd look like a complete ass in it, but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, let's talk about this tone a little bit more. Do you think this is meant for families, or is it because it kind of feels? A little, it had a little bit of a like a, almost a Mulan vibe with to it at times, and yeah. those and the odd topsies and no, no, no. It, it, no. it it's, it's not meant for families. It kind of walks that, yeah. It steps in and if, out. If they way. took yeah. away the pustules, if they took away all the gore, yeah, for sure. But there's a lot of gore. There's yeah, a I lot. Mean, of I don't think I wouldn't let my granddaughter watch it, but I think it's a movie my wife could watch and yeah, overlook sure. yeah. the gore mm-hmm. and still enjoy the story. I agree because it's it is story driven. Yeah, you know, sure. you know your kids. If 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 it's the kid that goes ew and turns away, then no. But if it's the kid that goes cool, then <laughs> you know, that's probably okay. I want to tell my granddaughter that's what's going to happen to her cat if she don't feed the goddamn thing. Oh, uh-oh, there you go. Turn into that. Oh, yeah, it was a turning <laughs> lesson. Don't feed, it, work. Yeah, don't feed it uh, <laughs> plague-infested dead bodies. <laughs> Rats. Yeah, they were very specific. It was a plague-infested rat that it ate. Oh, is that what it was? I thought it was yeah. the dead bodies. Oh, so. I thought it was people. Yeah. yeah I, thought it, I thought it was a rat. No, that, well, I think, no, it's, it went and eat, ate the bodies after mm, it got escaped. Yummy. Yeah. Because yeah. it kept throwing them down that cavern. Yeah. Yeah. It's oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, baby, yep. Yeah. That poor was a fun. That was Sparkles. Fun poor Mr. Sparkles. He didn't have a yeah. chance. I mean, wouldn't that be a great title for this? Sparkles. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then you'd be like, I don't get it. Why? Oh, <laughs> I see. Where did they come up with that name? I mean, it's just so funny in this Korean. <laughs> they know, wanted the sweetest. And, yeah. And who knows if the, the translation was correct? Maybe it's the equivalent of Sparkles. And yeah. oh, uh, yeah. but I thought that was kind of cool because you, you get this elderly gentleman who goes along and becomes a character in the movie and then later you find out there is there is a, a real tie in there right right yeah you, which you was go good. back and find out what, yeah 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 which was good that was a well-told story and i always find myself on these stupid things uh, i didn't know uh if it was like doc i didn't know if it was korean or japanese or what this was but part of the reason i hate subtitles is i get wrapped up in these stupid games like i'm trying to watch the words and watch what they're saying to see if they say like his father the same each time you know, oh, like when they say father, does it say father or are we getting some fucked up translation and we're not even hearing the same story that they're talking about? And <laughs> so I find myself doing that. And before I know it, like 20 minutes have gone by and all I've done is watch for father, uh, <laughs> you know, on the screen 30 times. So I could tell that with European languages, but I cannot tell that with Asian languages, the like Japanese, Chinese. Korean. Yeah, they're very, they're very doesn't... difficult. No, I can't even even when they have they tell you the name. Right. This is the person's name. I can't hear that name said anywhere. Yeah, it doesn't even sound <laughs> like it. Uh, so I just go with it, I guess, you know. Yeah, no, it, it's weird. Uh, that That is odd. Like we have father or it could be dad or daddy or, you know, it's, it's relatively the same. Well, there, was, there was a point in the movie there when the, at the end, and again, kind of spoilery, but after they, you know, the big finale and there's the big explosion and everything. And the girl was repeatedly saying, father, 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 right, right. father, you know, and I'm like, oh, hey, perfect time to find out if they say father the same way each time. And uh, and they did. It was, I don't remember what it was now, but you know, they said it the, the same time each way. So if I wanted to pay attention, I would be at least able to say father in Korean. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, you should Something. have repeated it 20 times. You should have been able to. <laughs> you know, what? one last thing is I, I liked our two main characters, the brothers, because, mm-hmm. you know, they, they were shown as kind of comedic relief at the beginning. They they aren't during the middle of the film. I mean, they sometimes they kind of revert back. But at the end, they they become those characters again. And, and mm-hmm. I thought that was so interesting how they just slid back into that persona. It was, uh, and oh, they're walking, walking away in their sexy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. I, just, I said, wow. Okay. There, there they are again. So uh, full circle. It's interesting. When they need to take care of business, they took care of business. 
But those those hats were so amazing because they were like mesh and see through. Yeah, like where you could see their little bun. Like what <laughs> on earth? Yeah. yeah, sorry, I'm totally with you with those hats. I was like, that is really cool. Yeah, it was a sexy pilgrim hat. Yeah, yeah it was wild. <laughs> All right, let's wrap this up. Let's get our final thoughts, our score, and this is going to be fun. Our favorite scene for Monstrum, Dave. You are up first. Uh, final words. I think actually we said it all pretty much. It's a, it's a highly entertaining uh, kind of um, mixed genre fare with a, a, a deadly beast named Sparkle. Yeah, I, I I found myself enjoying it quite a bit. I I really did. I got wrapped up in the in the characters and like uh, Jeff was saying with the the like all the different subplots with the you know the coups that were going on and you know they wanted to bring in the the tiger army or whatever they called them and you know it was you know it was good you could kind of see it building of where it was going to lead and at the end of the it started with the brothers and at the end it ended with the brothers you know i kind of like that it, it had a really great arc to it it's one of those movies that i was able to uh look past the subtitles and still enjoy the film the cgi was uh, worthy lots of uh lots of mayhem and bloodshed and uh, decapitations and uh, you kind of name it. Favorite scene? Uh, the, I'm going to go with uh, the scene. I'm not sure if it's the first time we see Mr. Sparkle, but uh, I think it's the first time we get like a really huge reveal, and that's when they're coming up out of the tunnel, and you see everything from from the the beast's point of view. Oh you, like, yeah, you come yeah, out, like out of the hole, and all mm-hmm. the people are standing down there, and you see the horror and the looks on their face, and you're kind of seeing the 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 bodies being ripped apart from the whatever it is, cats, dogs' point of view. And uh, I just thought it was a rather interesting and breathtaking shot. Uh, it was a little unique. I can't say that it's never been done before, but I've never seen it done quite like that before. And that was the true. I, I kind of lied a little bit. I said when they 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 revealed that uh, Sparkle was the the big beastie I was in, but actually on that scene, that was when I was like, "Wow, this 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 director uh, has some talent behind him." And if I see his name attached to anything else, I would watch it just with uh, just because of that. Ah, so awesome. I don't know if I can give it much higher praise. I'm going to give this one a three point seven five, which if you know for a foreign language subtitled film, that's very very high for me. Well, I only know one that's done better. So uh, when it hits Shutter, take the time and watch it. I'm actually going to watch it again when it hits Shutter because I want to watch it without that damn watermark over the <laughs> over the uh, over the subtitles. So I'm going to assume they translate the credits too because the the beginning is a whole series of yeah. And you know, we get kind yeah. of a Star Wars like epilogue or uh, prologue thing where it kind of gives you the the tail, didn't we? And, I, and we got a little did we didn't we get a little epilogue at the end too? A little. Ah. Yeah, yeah, a little bit, one. a little bit, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, good stuff. All right. Jeff, sir, what is your final thoughts, your score, favorite scene for Monster? Final thoughts, yeah, I like this a lot, and I don't, you know, if you just hate CGI, uh, maybe not, but otherwise, I think this is a really good, fun creature feature. It, it's a mythological monster, right, that, that fits into that. Uh, culture and uh, you do get a lot of the the culture and there there is enough there that if you're uh, OCD like me you can look some of that stuff up <laughs> and see the setting so anyway I I enjoyed the heck out of it I I highly recommend it I'm giving this a four and my favorite scene is I have one I want to say, but I don't know how to say it without giving something away. So I'm going to say something else. So the beginning of the movie, we you know we know there's a monster, right? But at the first act, really, there's a lot of is monster real or isn't monster real? Is monster something the bad guys made up to scare the people to help get rid of the king, or is monster a real thing? And they're out supposedly looking for monster, and we see a shot where. The old guy that we mentioned earlier, everybody else is kind of walking through, looking down. He's standing there looking up, and we see a, a branch in the tree, and the upper side of the branch is kind of stripped and shredded and has some goo on it. And that, to me, that was the, okay, it's real. This is, <laughs> this is something, something was up there. Something did that. It's not the bad guys that are trying to unseat the king. So I like that one. Cause then I thought, Oh good. We're going to really get a monster. <laughs> and boy, did we. 
<laughs> yes, we did. All right. When you started talking about trees, I thought you were going to mention something else. We'll, we'll talk about that later. All right, Crystal, you're up next. What is your final thoughts, your score, favorite scene, Monstrum? Well, as I said, I really, really liked it. Definitely, definitely, definitely watch it. And I'll watch it again, too. I'm actually going to give this a four. And Ooh. yeah, cool. it's pro- it might make it on my top 10 for the year. That's why I kind of gave it a little bump. I had a 3.752, but I was like, you know, really like it. It's kind of unique and original. And I think it's something that people may not watch unless they get a little push. So push, push. Anyway, <laughs> I'm also the only child here because my favorite scene is when the monster farts in its lair. I think oh, that was hilarious. Yes. I was like, I, I oh actually looked away for a minute. God. I didn't know if the monster had farted or if the the fat brother had farted, so I wasn't <laughs> sure what had happened. So <laughs> I heard the fart. I heard the fart. I didn't know who dealt it though. <laughs> I was like, oh my god! Okay. This time you can blame it on the dog. I'm just saying. That's so- <laughs> exactly. So, and we, and if anyone has a dog, you know how bad dog farts are. Gross. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, uh, so especially when, when they eat, you know, plague infested dead bodies. So for that sure, really, really right. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. The fact, so- the fact that you know that smell concerns me, Doc. I'm not going uh, <laughs> to. <laughs> I I uh, I I too like this movie quite a bit. It's uh, it pushed all the right buttons for me. Had the right characters. Had a nice story. I was a little iffy at the beginning of it, to be honest. But once it got into some carnage and then the creature, it, it really took off. the The last half of this film, I, I really, 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 really like. I, and I thought the creature was great. There's some great scenes with it just running around. Even though it's obvious CGI, I still think they did a great job. It's a great monster movie in that in that respect. Creature feature. Uh, so I'm going to give it a 3.75. And, and Jeff, I thought you were going to mention the scene when they, they're investigating the slaughter and, and they find a half a body on the ground and they look up in the trees and they see the other half. Oh, dangling. yeah. No, no. Uh, but uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. my, <laughs> my favorite scene, I think I kind of mentioned it earlier. Uh, there's a lot of really interesting scenes I could choose, but there's this there's a particular bad guy there's a couple of bad guys but there's a particular one who thinks he's the shit right and he's up on this uh, uh walkway on top of the building uh, it's not the roof <laughs> and the creature's in his face and he he thinks he's got power over it right and it looks like maybe he does there for a hot second and then the creature just chomp <laughs> and bites into him <laughs> <laughs> building with him hanging out of his face and oh man i i love that i thought that was great i cheered it was it was perfect it was it was so well done and the you know the, that slight pause to give you like huh <laughs> and then <laughs> jump. and i thought it was really well done even the cgi because they did it in a way that worked because they knew their own limitations because they had the brick wall in the way, so you didn't really, you know, it all worked. It all worked, and it, it was it was really well done. So, but there was there was tons of stuff you could choose. Just tons yeah. of stuff. I, I will call some BS on something toward the end with a rope and dynamite, but nah, uh, no, no, no. Me, no. Yeah. no you're gonna buy it. You're gonna buy it or BS? <laughs> what is it, Chris? Or buy it or BS? <laughs> I, I don't care. I bought it. I was surprised we went I back and, and seen it. I thought they were just going to leave it alone, but they actually went back and tried to explain that, I, I, or how I, it happened. I, yeah, I appreciate that, but holy, holy uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. It, that was, they're the best yeah. warriors. The best warriors. They yes. made it. They did it. Yeah, he sure did. <laughs> he, he, had to, he had to wear that sexy pilgrim hat. He had to on that. All right. <laughs> Only he can wear <laughs> you can wear whatever you want when you do that. Yeah, yeah that's true. Good point. All right. Well, that's our review for Monstrum, which is uh, debuting on Shutter May 14th. So when you're listening to this, it should be out. So check it out and let us know what you think. To do that, you can just write us at feedback at gruesomemagazine.com or you can join our Facebook group or go to gruesomemagazine.com and leave some show notes or leave, leave a comment on the show notes. Do it that way. It's a little easier. <laughs> I'll do the show notes. You do the commenting. Uh, that's how it works. Uh, but we want to hear from you. Yes. All right. Up next is Diablo Rojo P 
T Y from directors uh, Sol Moreno and Jay Oscura Na- Na- Nejera Nehera Nehera. Why <laughs> you enjoy this tape? Come ahead, just keep uh, on coming. All right, the cat. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Settle in. The cast includes Carlos Carrasco, Leo Wisnitzer. And Alejandro Arus. Oh my God, I give up. All right. This is a Panama's first ever horror film uh, coming May 24th. And here is the synopsis. A Diablo Rojo bus driver, his helper, a priest, two policemen, fall victim to a mysterious spell and end up lost somewhere in the Chiriki jungle. That's not pronounced right. Uh, where they have to survive the creatures that inhabit the roads with the old bus as their only refuge. That's about right. But it, 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 this movie's zany. It, it, it yeah. needs to yeah. the word zany in here somewhere. But let's find out what our first impression of Diablo Rojo is. Crystal, you are up first. Okay. So you saying that this movie is like the first movie for, first horror movie for Panama makes a lot of sense because there's a lot going on. Okay, so I think that they had a vision, and I don't know if they achieved their their vision or not, but they, whoever made the film, I think, tried to do a little bit too much or a lot too much for their first go around here. It's a confusing one to me because while I understood the story, and they definitely did did a lot of... Uh, talking about exactly what was happening and then showing. I mean, it was kind of like, Bleh, and then you got to see it. Bleh, and then you got to see it. So I appreciate that because it let us know what was happening and what was going on. However, it was too much. It was too much for them. They, it was a little disjointed. It, oh God, it, this is, a, this is like, oh, There are some things that I just detested about the movie. And yet there were some things that I was really impressed with and really loved. Some of the things that I did not like were the classic Disney movie score. Oh, the live action movie score. That that was a classic. That was like 70. That was Starsky and Hutch and uh, Rock and Wild shit going on. the, The score was just utterly strange with the movie. It didn't make any sense. I'm pretty sure it was just a Knott's Landing score that they stole. No, it was it was all original music. Yeah, can you believe it? Because I actually watched the credits to try to figure out. I, I heard that like, shit on Mannix. I ain't buying it. It was on Mannix. <laughs> Mannix. Oh my god! I'll, I'll tell you this: Jake and they, the Batman. Yeah, if they had changed the music, it would have been infinitely better. I don't know what they were watching to kind of gauge that with Mannix. But, well, Oh boy. <laughs> but so so basically these guys, these bus drivers, you know, are Rock hated by the community. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's good. they're hated by the community and they're driving these buses and apparently they're they're unsafe. They're this, they're that, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And you think that's kind of where the story is gonna go. No, no, that's actually just a small portion of the story. It completely deviates and goes into of a I think they're trying to do more of a La Llorona kind of sort of ritualistic uh, folklore telling where they have witches. And not only that, though, that wasn't enough for them. They decided they also had to add cannibals to the story, which is a completely different sect of people. So they have witches on a mountain and cannibals and, you know, a guy who abandoned his love and yet they had a child. It, It goes Ghosts, witches, cannibals, like, I don't know that they had an idea of completely what they wanted this movie to be other than everything. And that was another issue that I had with it. It it wasn't, it didn't have enough of a focus. However, like I said, there were some things that I loved. I loved the puppeteered monster. I thought it was awesome. I freaking loved it. And I know that's kind of got this 80s vibe. What I just, I thought it was awesome. I thought they did a good job on that. I thought they tried really hard on that. I loved the the crazy hyper colors that they had on the buses. And I, I, you know, I mean, the poor, the poor police officer who had his, his arm eaten off 
or whatever. I, you know, I mean, it, you could tell he had something over his hand. It doesn't matter. I still enjoyed that. Poor dude, you know, was was really hurt there for a long extended period of time where he'd probably be <laughs> dead if he had. But you know what? I, yeah, like I said, it's it's kind of all over the place. And I've seen so many horror movies, and I've seen so many worse than this. And I feel like had they tightened this up and and solidified one version of the story and gone in that direction and changed the score, it would have been much more successful. That's my first thoughts. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was wondering what was kind of throwing me a little bit about this movie, and I think you nailed it. So that's interesting. I do like the cast, though. I thought the cast was... Oh, yeah. We're fine. Sure. All right. Well, let's find out what the rest of the crew thought. Jeff Moore, you are up next. What is your first impression of Diablo Rojo? Okay, so there is... You know I had to look. Mm -hmm. There is a Panamanian legend that this is loosely based on called La Tula Vieja, which is what you described. You know, it's... it's, You figured out during the show. Plot-wise, it kind of felt like an updating or modernization of a plot from like a sixties luchador film oh, wow. transported from Mexico to Panama. Like um, the only thing missing was the luchadors. Uh, I guess maybe the, the bus drivers were, it's extremely complicated. There's multiple villains. This centerpiece creature is kind of badly realized, although I still loved it. But again, don't get me wrong. It's I loved it. And is it all over the place? All A lot of the stuff that Crystal said is kind of why I liked it. It's all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> There's cannibals. What the hell are those cannibals doing there? Because we got witches that eat babies. So why do we need cannibals? Uh, the witches do, they've got, they have lots of powers. They have mind control. They can induce hallucinations, telekinesis. Shape shifting, oh, yeah. they, oh, yeah. they can fly. Uh, yes, flesh melting goo, levitating. Yes, flying cannibalism, uh, and you know the aforementioned baby eating. But they're afraid of smoke, and yeah. holy, yeah, well, holy water yeah. is like acid to it. <laughs> Pot smoke, baby. Yeah, a particular type of smoke. It's and smoke. then the, we have a padre <laughs> that can apparently turn an entire river into holy water. Hell yeah. Yeah. And a bus driver's <laughs> assistant who's stoned most of the time and thinks creating holy gasoline would be a better idea than holy water. I, Actually, I, I loved cool. him. Okay. That I loved stuff him. That was just great. <laughs> the bus is all tricked out like some kind of weird, you know, it's painted up like a party van and a lit, lit up like a Christmas tree kind of thing. There's lights, colorful light. It's just the most colorful thing. It's awesome. I just really liked it. Again, the music, yeah, the music is odd and seemed like a weird cross between, you know, like I, what I was thinking was 60s action TV shows. You know, it was kind of the, or 70s would work too. Maddox, Fitz, yeah, Dragnet, you know, Fitz, all that yeah. stuff, you know. It was just really odd. And lots and lots of red lit scenes <laughs> but anyway i liked it i sat there watching this just going oh my god what are they going to do next <laughs> is it is it unfocused is it <laughs> disjointed is it over the top yeah but i just had a lot of fun with it <laughs> uh that's that's delightful all right here here comes the test this is the litmus right here we go dave Dreher. what is your first impression of diablo rojo I, I'm convinced that Lloyd Kaufman uh, snuck out of mine and made a movie. Uh, I don't care what they tell me. This had Tromo written all over it. Oh, it did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, it, 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 everything that Crystal and Jeff has said is a thousand percent true. It's, it's, uh, I was very confused most of the movie. I, I was, I just watched it on my computer because the, the screening software, you guys will appreciate this. The screening yeah, software that this one was on is always, is always glitchy at best. So I just watched it on my computer and the wife was sitting in the chair next to me and she's watching me and she's like, what are they doing? And I'm like, um, <laughs> we're eating a baby. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what are they doing? Uh, they're they're, they're uh, float, floating over a forest. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, well, this, this, it was all over the place. It was strange. And I didn't know what the whole thing with the, I mean, that whole opening scene with the two buses racing each other. I don't know what that was supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah. I have no idea what was going on there, but the, the buses were pretty. Yeah, but I I think they just they had a great uh, you know they in the 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 PR package I read or looked at 
uh, they were claiming it, you know, being all all practical effects, which I believe. I think they were all practical effects, and I think mm-hmm. they just had this series of gags that they thought would be great. Uh, and they're like, okay, we we need to build a story around this. <laughs> we we got to find some kind of cohesive glue to to be able to do this stuff. The the puppet of the uh, was she a witch? I guess she was a witch. The wing thing, the ghost. She was like, ghost? actually, oh, yeah. she would be more like a wraith. I mean, because she was angry, she was still mad at yeah. him abandoning her. So great. I would say she's a wraith. Yeah, yeah, it looked great, and we get to see her again at the end, and it looks even better. We get some prolonged shots of her, and I love the the, the whole concept. I, I don't know if we've ever seen anything like that before. And again, I don't want to do too much spoiler, but at the end, uh, Jeff, you already alluded to it. With the the priest can make the entire river holy water but i yeah. thought that was great i thought that was fantastic the whole the whole melting i mean it was it was prolonged and it was uh you know it, it was quite awesome but yeah then there's just a whole bunch of jibbery jabbery nonsense you know between those things <laughs> you know? and uh they had the i think what the runtime is only something like it, it's a short movie it's not long uh i think it's 80 minutes 80 minutes yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's a short it's a short movie, and out of that eighty minutes, there's probably actually fifteen that's that's good, uh, and the rest of oh, it is. I think it's a little more than that. Yeah, but... I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. A, lot of, a lot of shots, overhead shots of the of the pretty colored bus driving up and down streets. But yeah, I mean, I didn't hate it though. Uh, I didn't. I I, I really didn't. Uh, uh, by this time, I was completely numb to the subtitles, and at least this this place had the. The, the wherewithal to to put the subtitles below the watermark so I can actually read them, <laughs> yeah, which helped. But it's not a great movie, and I, I like <laughs> out there there when, when the cops are chasing the the uh, the bus and the, and the cop chases goes into the you know he kind of rams the bus he kind of they have an accident I guess right and oh, it's like it was no big deal the guy's just like I'm going to have to take no, you and you have to go to court. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like, okay. and the whole time you got the you got the Barnaby Jones theme playing in the background and you're just like <laughs> am I watching exactly but I, I, I can't lie to you I didn't hate it so that's my first impression didn't hate it I enjoyed just because of how zany it was, it was it's just throwing everything in like, you know, it feels independent and low budget and, and you know just somebody that's excited that they're making a movie. You know, everybody felt like they're having a great time making this silly little movie. Now, is it a good movie? No, I don't think it's a good movie, but it's, <laughs> a, it's, a, but I had a good time with it. Yeah. I think most of it had to do with the special effects because they are, they're raw, but they're, you know, they are practical and, and they work. And even like I thought when they when the witches were levitating and the creature was levitating and flying around, I thought that was really well done. I kind of wish we saw more of that. Did I have a hard time following it? Yeah, it took me a while to catch up. Even you know, I'm, I'm glad they were explaining things, Crystal, because that helped. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it took me a while to figure out, like, oh, oh, I get it. You guys have already traveled too far in the short amount of time. I get it. Okay, thanks for telling me because you know I, I'm not familiar with. You know, the locale, so I don't know if I would have caught that ever. If it was a stateside film, if they said, you know, hey, we just left New York City and now we're in Texas, how'd that happen? You know, we'd, we'd get it. You wouldn't have to say anything else, right? True. I also think the cast helped because I liked all the, the cast members, uh, the two cops, mm-hmm. the, the priest, the young stoned uh, helper. And I, I really liked Carlos Carrasco as, as our lead and his plight. I actually thought he had a well-rounded story uh, as Miguel, right? Because Mm -hmm. he's at the center of this and he had to make tough decisions in his life. And did he make the wrong ones? Most likely, but they were motivated, right? He had great motivations for his character. and, And then of course, so did Josephina character from her point of view. So that's always a good start. When when your characters are are well motivated, and of course everything they do motivates all the other characters, and 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 so it ties all together. And to me, that kind of kind of made the structure of the story work. Even though I still have no idea why suddenly we had all the cannibals running around. <laughs> it's like, mm-hmm. I was like, I was like, 
are they part of because the they had they had some great cannibal gags that they wanted to yeah. use. Yeah, they yeah. Like that makeup that makeup. Yeah, was yeah. That's, that's what it was. I'm telling you, that was a driving force for all this. They just had these really great <laughs> ideas, and they had to find a way to make them all work. Yeah. Classic Ed Wood shit. Yeah, you know, you might be right there. <laughs> so this this is like a a great bad movie, right? So. Yeah, it's good driving yeah. there. Yeah. I mean, I can see this playing on Joe Bob and him going, you know how he always rates him and he can, you know, he's going, mm-hmm. gratuitous baby eating. Uh, <laughs> you know, acid zombie. Uh, yeah. Ice baby melting. Baby. And, you know, hey, I mean, it's us, it's yeah, we can't forget incest. That's also yeah. part of this. Yes. yes. Oh, yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. Because mm-hmm. he ended up, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Which, yeah. My favorite part was, though, he was clearly sexually assaulted okay <laughs> he was sexually yes. assaulted and yet in his mind he's like i hooked up with this girl at the bar last night. wait what <laughs> <laughs> i think more what happened in his about? mind than, than what we saw yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we did get the nice hand reach but dave it, it occurred to me quite often during this film and we've mentioned one scene in particular a couple times that our our dear friend Santa Selden Jr. the Black Saint would have would have loved. Oh yes, yeah. It's the first thing I thought yep. of when they ate the baby. Yep. I'm like, oh, well, God. there yep. we go. <laughs> I, I just, I, I was like, man, I get I, in I, me belly. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. Exactly. Put the baby in me belly. Uh, they went there too. That scene. I mean, they had. Oh the yeah. There was no. Oh there. yeah. It was like, wow. Okay, that's bold. Yeah. Yep. We're I, eating the baby. We're eating the baby. Yep. There it goes. <laughs> it's not. It's not implied at all. It is just there. Uh, matter of fact, if that might be the most the more gory scene in the whole thing. Wouldn't it be great if the baby's name was Ruth? Yeah, baby Ruth. I think that'd be fun. We should have done that. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. I think that they had to be a boy because it seems like when they find girl babies, they like to turn them to the dark. Yes. Oh, well, there you go. Because they're a female-driven, you know, crew. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I think Cherry Moon Zombie had a cameo with that cackling we had going on there. For <laughs> <a while. laughs> oh, that too. That <laughs> like, hey, look at that. Cherry Moon in an uncredited, uh, an uncredited role. That's nice. You were south of the border and just kind of jumped in the front. Yeah, the what the hell? Hey, that's a camera. I know what to do. Oh. <laughs> um, what? Did I say something <laughs> no, wrong? No, no, no. Nope. Put camera around your cackle. That's what you do. Make a um, million dollars. I, you guys. All right. So, Jeff, <laughs> Jeff, do you think the priest could really have crawled down to the... To Are the... you kidding me? <laughs> He even had no. his entrails no. dragging behind him. Yes, he, yes, he did. Yes. Yeah. All right. So he had, he had, he had, quite a ways. His demise was spectacular. And uh, and then he wasn't done. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It had to have been divine intervention. There you go. There you go. It was it was. He, well, uh, that guy that that guy thought he had it made because he had he managed to get his joint lit and he was you know he was puffing that uh, that yes. magic smoke in their face and then <laughs> and he stuck his then he stuck his hand in the water. Yep. And he went, oh shit! <laughs> yeah. Oh shit! I'm fucked. That's what that was. Oh shit! I'm fucked. <laughs> that was, God, he was one of my favorite characters though because oh, he just great. didn't seem to care about anything. All this shit was going on and he's like, cool. But, wow. He's like, oh. So you had sex with Can a I witch. Drive the bus? Man, you're drive my the bus hero. <laughs> yeah, I love you. Drive the bus. Yes. <laughs> oh my. Yes, you're my hero. Oh God. Mm-hmm. Oh, and then he's like, "Oh, it was your daughter." Ah, <laughs> I'm like, "Jeez, these guys." <laughs> yeah, classic. I wonder if there's anything that is lost on us. I'm sure there is, right? Some local there humor. Has to be. I, I absolutely had yeah. no idea what was going on. I didn't even know what the title <laughs> even meant. I was like, what the, what the hell is the... I, but it didn't matter. It, none of it matters. None of it matters? None of it matters. No, it all worked, right? It, well, I don't know about that, but it ah! makes, for, makes for a fun view. Well, okay. It's a fun view. <clears throat> is it a fun view for everybody? Uh, well, only for people with sick warped minds like ourselves i I mean for horror lovers i think it's funny i think people are gonna be like what the heck i mean i think they'll be much like i was where you're like "Ah, it's kind of a train wreck but you don't want to turn away i think him describing it as okay it it maybe is not 
quite as crazy as some of the trauma stuff, but it's, it's, in the, it's getting in the same there. Yeah, it's yep, the same it's ballpark. getting there. I think that was a pretty accurate. <laughs> yeah, it's like what on earth are we watching? <laughs> I don't know. The monster was the real big win for me, though. I mean, it was really cool. Yeah, whoever was, handled the effects did a, did a, actually did a very great job. They, they were they were impressive. I'm trying to think. Carlos Carrasco was in Speed. Yeah, I, I knew I'd, I knew I recognized him. He was on the bus with Keanu and Sandra. He was, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. Okay. Hmm. All right. I was, I was trying to think, like, man, where have I seen him? And he was on. Yep. All right. There you go. All right. Let's wrap this up. Let's give our final thoughts, our score, and our favorite scene. We can't all choose the baby chewing scene. All right. Crystal, you're up first. Okay. So, like I said, some stuff I just did not like. And I'm sure that no one's going to like the score. That's just the bottom line. No one is going to like the score that sands down worst part of this film. Being said, like I said, there's some stuff I really like. That monster kicking booty. I'm going to give it a 2.75. So see, that's pretty, that, that says watch it. And my favorite scene is the male terrifier kill is what I'm going to call that. The male terrifier kill. Terrifier, like the movie. Oh, uh, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. The, the, the male the, terrifier the, kill, the, yeah. Yeah, because it goes... The, the magic machete, yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. awesome. I was like, whoa. So, and, and they did a good job on it, too. I mean, he wasn't nude, but, you know. No. All good. No. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, still, you still went. by his feet, but Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you didn't know where that was going either because, you know, it just kind of uh, ripped it out of his hand. You're like, oh, just getting it away from him, you know, and then no, 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 we're not done. <laughs> we have such sights to show you. That's a good choice, Crystal. I like yeah, that. Thanks. Choice. Yeah. Nice. All right. Jeff Moore, you're up next. What's your final thought? Your score, favorite scene, Diablo Rojo. Well, I'm not going to go into it too much more. I probably gave too much away by my list of craziness, but I, I will say, I think it's faults for me. It's faults are it's pluses. It just, I don't know. I even, okay. Okay. I even enjoyed the score once, I, once I got used to it. Well, it was, it just fits. It's, it's crazy. And zany. <laughs> just smoking, like, smoking, smoking, <laughs> just like a man who used to watch streets of San Francisco. Yes. <laughs> you just <laughs> pulling them out. I was, I was actually thinking maybe, uh, 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 M squad, but okay. That's yeah. Yeah. Uh, it really all those fit. It had the classic seventies police drama score. Mm -hmm. It really did. I don't know if, if I can, how to recommend us to people. I just had great fun. And I, I agree with doc in that. I don't know. I, I guess I'd like to know if this was exactly what they were going for or actually to, talk to the filmmakers like to find out if it was like what dave said but i just was flabbergasted and kind of just enjoyed the shit out of it and and how disturbing they went so i i'm gonna go i'm giving this a three and a half wow nice and what do i say for my favorite scene i don't want to take the easy one but i'm going to or I could leave it for, yeah. This is the uh, what the fuckulous moment of this film. Yes, yes, <laughs> in in yes. honor of the Black Sea. It, 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 it might get the it might get the twenty twenty what the fuckulous award. Yeah, we could yeah. get it. And and those those that baby they just have the stretchiest uh, body parts. Mm -hmm. I just <laughs> <laughs> whatever it was they were eating, it was stretchy. Like <laughs> anyway, Jeff, they didn't eat a real baby. It's a movie. Oh. Uh, Oh. Well, I thought you said it was practical. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, I I like that. Yeah, you you got it. You got it, man. All right, Dave. Now it's your turn. What's your final thoughts? Your score, favorite scene, Diablo roll. Final thoughts. You know what? This is this is going to sound really confusing, but follow me here. Oh, follow no. along. Follow along. <laughs> Listen up. Do not watch this movie, but whatever you do, don't miss it. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That, that's, that's the best way you can put this. I'm going to give it a two and a half. Watch it. You're going to watch this just for the special effects and the craziness. 
that goes on. It, it's like a like a train wreck. Somebody said it's like a train wreck you can't turn away from. It's an Ed Wood movie. It's a Lloyd Kaufman movie. But, it, you know, in the Middle Age, obviously, whoever this director was uh, has seen all this. And I think even the 70s score was on purpose. This was somebody who's been influenced by these styles mm -hmm. of entertainment. And uh, it's what he or she knows. And he they put it all together. And this is their their masterpiece. And I can appreciate that. Uh, you know, uh, I'm only going to give it a two and a half. But again, like I said, uh, I, I really can't recommend it. But at the same time, don't not see it. Everyone needs to experience this and develop Excellent. their own uh, their own take on what this is. Favorite scene? I don't know. There was a lot of them, and I'm gonna I'm gonna take an easy one. But I just thought it was really masterfully well done, and that's the uh, ending. And this is spoilery. I'll, I won't get too spoilery, but we get we get a whole crew of uh, of melting witches in a in a river. <laughs> oh, that, they did a good uh, job on that. Yeah, yeah, it looked it looked really good, and we get to see like each each witch got has their own demise. You know, some of the hair just fall out, and others the face melt melts off, and you know, others are uh, you know, it, it it's just it's it's a wide variety of. Uh, of melting <laughs> a wide variety of melting. <laughs> but you know it, it really was kind of a throwback to to movies like the stuff and and stuff like that where you know it just it was just this bizarre vision that somebody had and they built this movie around it so i, I can't say i didn't enjoy it but at the same time i didn't like it so uh it, it's a very confusing movie but but check it out and see what you think. Gore, I think Gorehounds will 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 sing its praises. Yeah, it definitely has an audience. There's an audience out there for this. It may or may not be you who are listening, but it's worth uh, experiencing. I, I say I love the, your expression, Dave. I like it. Don't watch it, but at the same time, don't miss it. So I, I like that. I, I have a little bit, slightly bit more favorable reaction than you, but only slightly. I, I'm going to give it a three point two five. I, for me, it's a lot because the cast was amusing and I liked them. And this, I thought I, I enjoyed the story, even though it's crazy and wacky, but at the same time, it, it's a little raw, the filmmaking style, the selections, the choices, the camera work, the lighting, it, it has a lot of raw aspects, but it, every once in a while, there's like a little moment of brilliance. <laughs> it's kind of like, yeah. you guys are so close dudes. Maybe another year of school would be awesome. <laughs> you guys are really gonna nail this but man what a great what a great first entry if the, if it's just, if this is their first film there's two directors it's so energetic and you get the idea everybody's having fun and that carries the film when when it when it starts to fall apart and the music is horrendous crystal i don't care whatever yeah. it, it was i was like <laughs> there's some times like when something's happening it's like why is oh my god i know it's like tink tink it was just like just all over the tone, man. Just do it. <laughs> Smoking like a man who's never watched an episode of Dallas. Oh well. <laughs> I'm telling you, I, the, couple, the two or three episodes of Dallas I watched, nothing ever happened in there like this. I'm just saying. It's just so random. So weird. It's very, it's very bizarre. I'm pretty sure Dave Bobby Ewing never ate babies. Yeah, you don't know huh? a lot of a lot of shit happened there on South. What was it, South, <laughs> South Fork? Yeah, some weird shit went down at South South Fork. Yeah, there's a lot of stories they didn't tell, but here they are in Diablo Roll. <laughs> <laughs> you saw Night of the Lepus, right? Oh, oh, stop. Place on top. Now, all right, three point two five is my score. Um, my favorite scene is is the the what the fuckulous moment that that's for certain, but. Since uh, Jeff took that, I'm going to go with the reveal of the wraith figure, or the the actual creature, which is is what what is it? What did you say it was called? The creature in in the history? Oh, uh, sure. Yes. The uh, La Tula Vieja, right? La uh, Tula Tula Vieja. Tula Vieja. Yeah, T U L I V I E J A. Okay. Somebody can pronounce that crap properly for me. I think you did a really good job. I did not. Regardless, when that creature shows up, it's delightfully designed in hokey and all the best fun ways. And it flies in a in a very crane 
sort of way that's yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it is. It, it, You're not it, wrong. I love that. I was just like, okay, right out of the gate. We're just going to go here, right? You know, one moment he's saying, Josefina, the next moment it's eating <laughs> the hand <laughs> off uh, of a, off of a cop. cop. So great, really well done. I loved it. And I was, I was in, I was already in because it was damn funny these two guys being chased by the cops. And it was like, this is the most ridiculous car chase ever. <laughs> <laughs> let's go, let's do this. So I don't know. Yeah. Dave, I think you said it wrong. I can't believe anybody hasn't mentioned the nightmare on Elm street ending either. Oh the, my God. The, yes. Okay. I mean, that, that was, was like really nightmare funny. on Elm street altogether. All yep. we needed oh my God, was, it was. Yes. Yep, yep, yep. All we needed was mom getting sucked through the front, the front door uh, <laughs> window. We, <laughs> we'd have so been there. Well. And, and yeah, see, no, I appreciated that. Like, I do appreciate those little moments, and that's why it got a two point seven five. That's pretty yeah, good. Yeah, definitely, a, definitely an um, an homage to to Nightmare on Elm Street. There, like I said, who the, whoever the directors are on this, they they are a fan of uh, of seventies and eighties fare, and this was their love letter to it. It is. Mm. It ab- absolutely is. It comes out May fourteenth on Amazon Prime Video. I do not know if it's for sale or free at this point. But uh, when you check, you'll find out. Yeah, I think Prime Video is usually the rental stuff. It's just Amazon, just Amazon Prime is free. Gotcha. Okay. So I would imagine this is a six ninety nine rental if I if I were a, a betting man. Don't spend the money, but spend the money. Yes, there you go. <laughs> don't spend the money, but uh, go ahead and let them have the cash. All right. And don't blame us because we told you so regardless. I, That's I, right. Either way, either yeah. way. All right. There you go. That's our reviews for tonight. We reviewed Monstrum, which comes out May 14th on Shutter, And we reviewed Diablo Rojo, which comes out the same day on Amazon Prime Video. So uh, good luck with those. <laughs> I think I, there's, there's stuff to love in each. Mileage may vary. Have fun. <laughs> mileage may vary that's a good way to put it i love how y'all are definitely recommending it and then also being very hands-off very yeah. hands-off yeah. Hedging, our, like, we're hedging, hedging our bets right we're not yeah <laughs> i would never be able to forgive myself if i did not tell a fellow horror fan to make sure they see the melting witches in the stream thing you gotta um, see witch that. soup like it was a witch yeah. soup it was yeah. really witch, good you gotta you gotta yeah. see that, that, that mm-hmm. gotta, it's not it's not the greasy strangler or the night virgin but it's no. kind of there. Eh. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow, he went with Greasy Strangler. Wow, that's going to confuse a lot of people. Yeah, wow. I know. I'm like, well, <laughs> the Greasy Strangler just made so much sense to me for some reason. <laughs> it's it. it like the Napoleon Dynamite of horror. So, yeah. yeah. That's not too far off. Oh, that's, yeah, okay. That's what um, I say. It's not. It's not, but it. But it kind of is. Kind of is. <laughs> right, uh, Dave, thank you. I'm so glad you're back, buddy. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So glad you enjoyed our our double feature with uh with the with, uh, that you had to read. Yeah, I I'm gonna I'm gonna try a different uh, mentality here. From now on I only want movies with subtitles. It works. Oh, Don't send me any without that's subtitles. That's how it works, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll try that now. You guys know me too well. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> All right. Oh my God. <laughs> that, that's awesome. I think I can. I can think I can manage to do that. All right, <laughs> Dave, Jeff, Crystal, thank you for joining me. Thanks for having us. You're welcome. Yay. All right. Join us next week when we tackle another pair. All right. Let's say good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.